uh, okay so tell me tell me a little bit more about the engine and how how does it look like uh, in terms of features like um, what is there in the engine because this is also maybe for the listeners uh, it might be interesting like if you think about the engine you kind of feel if you think and you know unity or unreal you're thinking about this list yeah. of features that is there and yeah. in order to make my game i would need to recreate everything and it, i think it's not the case right you yeah. want to have the features that you want to have in game and this is yeah. the, the minimal the subset uh, that you need and it will be like one percent of the features that that is in the engine and all of the yeah. other parts that you don't use uh, inside the engine they will still be there to slow you down <laughs> to to make your ui uh, complicated the editor complicated and things like that so tell me what uh what features are there in the do you have a name for the engine yeah the engine is called serial box we Cereal always box. name our stuff like um for the theme okay. like uh waffle is our mod player for instance and serial box is the engine okay so what what features are in the serial box uh, okay, serial box start as a like very minimal C engine. The way to look at it is like imagine a, uh, a little uh, emulation box, a little like virtual machine, which is not virtual because it's native in C and everything. But imagine like there is this world where you got two functions pretty much. One is called update graphics. The other one is called update audio. And they give you, you know, the graphic will give you a graphic uh, buffer where you draw with the size of the original screen and the update audio will give you a frame buffer a audio frame buffer where you write audio so that's the bare minimum of course the engine supports like you're asking, you're asking what are the features in those functions it will give you the inputs and the outputs of this virtual machine which is again not virtual so I, it's my way to separate the engine from the platform okay so i just the game just wants to know that here is the buffer please update the graphic uh, here is the input. I will give you the an array with the you know the number of uh, joypads connected and the data for the joypads. Uh, it supports pen input as well, which we use for some custom editors we got. Uh, it supports touch as well, which works across Windows and mobile phones for the, the few games that cross platform with mobile as well. So we'll give you an array of inputs again: joypad, pen, mouse, uh, touch as well. Uh, a keyboard and, and that way you know what, what's happening in this virtual machine which is again i'd say virtual based not virtual is the actual but as far as the game concerned that that's what i get is the input and we give you an output which is where, where to write the the buffer for the screen uh and the same for the audio just how many frames or audio do we need and then the game will just provide so it's super simple in terms of other features uh slowly over time we added like Common is very modular serial box, so you can start with that, and that's it. It will give you update graphic, update audio. The rest is up to you. But of course, we got common extras that we can import and use in the form of header or C files, uh, which are, as I mentioned previously, we got a mod player that we wrote in house. For people that don't know, mod music is a music format that was very popular in the 90s, especially on computers like the Commodore Amiga. It's got four channels of track, uh, like audio. And uh, it's basically trackers uh, music. So uh, it, it goes through the timeline, it plays samples with different options. It's very, very efficient, very compact. And the reason we're using it is that we haven't got any uh, musician in-house out of it. We commission the music and having a common file format is helpful. At the end, I want our games to be very fast to load, like instant basically, and don't take too much memory. So mod is a good choice. Plus, with the advantage of giving people that retro nostalgia vibe when they hear the type of sounds. So it was very easy to put an ad on some of the popular mod music uh, forums out there, because the internet is great. There are lots of <laughs> forums and stuff like that. And find people that are happy to get music on commission. Nowadays, we mostly rely on Robin Powell. She's been fantastic. She's done all the soundtracks for uh, Full Void, and she's working on our next project as well. So uh, mod music player, other features. Uh, we have developed our own custom uh, file format for graphic, which is very, very efficient. It can do is specifically designed for pixel art. So it can compress large animation using very, very, very little memory. And it, it, it can uncompress them and draw them in real time. 
Uh, so that's something we got as an extra utility in Serial Box, which is really helpful as we got hundreds, if not thousands of animations in full void. So that really helps to keep the game as more. And then you can play sounds like WAV file as well, which we also have a format. Another one is a voxel drawing. Uh, full void is entirely 2D in pixel art, but we do have some 3D models which are made in voxel and they're rendered by the engine in the same pixel buffer. So it's all software rendered. Uh, so for instance, if you see the lift in full void, stuff that goes up and down, we wanted this to change with the perspective of the screen. Uh, and now our pixel artist was very good with voxel model. So uh, he drew uh, the voxel model in cubicle. And then I wrote a custom exporter to export the model into our own format and import and render it in full void. So there is a bit of software render 3D, which makes the game a bit cyberpunk. You must have seen it in the hacking games or yeah. when in the programming games in, in, in the games that are 3D models as well. So that's all 3D by software rendered. Okay, okay. This is so cool. Like uh, <laughs> you have your own uh, your own format for the images, for the yeah. graphics. You have the uh, mod player for sound, and yeah. you uh, sometimes for the game you're using 3D models, the yeah. voxels, and they are converted using software renderer to 2D images to represent. Right. Okay, yeah. that's so cool. And uh, when you're saying that uh, that you as a developer are given the uh, buffer to update in terms of the visuals and yeah. then the music, the audio buffer, you're saying that this happens per frame, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So you're running in a loop, obviously, and per frame you can modify what is being played or yes. what is being uh, visualized. And you, as an input, you get the input from from the input devices. So, depending on where the platform, you get different kinds of inputs. Okay, this Correct. is so minimalistic. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> but it works really well. It's extremely fast, and so together with the update graphic, you get a delta time, so you know how much time has passed from the previous frame. And if you got like ball bouncing on the screen, you know you can compute the distance. Yeah, 